Welcome back to OWF 13. We're here with Simon Phipps, the president of the OSI Foundation. Welcome back, Simon. It's, it's nice it's to see you again. It's <laughs> always good to be here. I'm actually on the program committee for OWF, so I've been following it for many years now. Well, and I'm back again this year. Uh, I spoke this morning, and I'll be speaking at a track tomorrow morning. Well, it's great to have you here again. Thank you. So uh, could you just remind us once more, what is the OSI? So OSI, that's the Open Source Initiative. Uh, we were started in 1998. Uh, our role has been to define what the term open source means and specifically to define it in terms of licenses. Uh, the actual mission of the organization is to uh, advocate for uh, open source uh, and to build bridges between open source communities. And so we're gradually changing the role of OSI. Um, in the next few weeks, I hope we will be able to announce our first member of staff who will be leading the organization. And we act as the, uh, the meeting point for other open source organizations. So we have about 25 members that include organizations like the Linux Foundation, like Debian, uh, like uh, uh, OW2 who are here uh, and each of those organizations are affiliates of OSI and use OSI as the place where they hold conversations between open source foundations. So you could think of us as a little bit like a, a United Nations of open source foundations. All right, and today there was, uh, there was a panel on the future of open source foundations. So That's correct, yes. Could you tell us a bit more about what it was about? And uh oh, Well, we had representatives from a number of open source foundations there. We had uh, the Apache Software Foundation, Eclipse, uh, uh, the Genevieve uh, Initiative, which has just joined the Linux Foundation, OW2, um, I think there might have been another one as well. And um, we were discussing uh, the roles of each of those foundations and uh, you know, why they existed, what they did, those sorts of things. So, and considering that like, open source communities are basically like fraternities, so why would we need finally uh, open source foundations? What's the use of them? Right. Well, uh, for very small open source projects, you probably don't need an open source foundation. If you've got a, a family group size number of developers, they can trust each other and they can collaborate without the need for an external framework of rules. But once you begin to scale up a community of people, they begin to need a set of rules that will determine how they collaborate, uh, how um, status is allocated, how shared bills are paid. And all of those sorts of things require a framework of rules in which people can operate. As the organization goes up, those rules need to be more formal. And uh, if you had spoken to all of those foundations this morning, Apache, Eclipse, Linux Foundation, all of them exist to create a, a neutral, safe space for open source developers to collaborate and focus on code without the business interests of the companies behind the developers getting in the way, uh, becoming political issues. And also, uh, it, it acts as a place where the shared infrastructure can be managed and paid for. So that uh, an open source foundation is not per se essential, but as an organization grows up in scale, it becomes more and more necessary to have that framework of rules and that set of shared resources. And I think you've been talking about uh, open source promotion in the EU today in the, in the panel. So what, according to you, what would be the best way to do that, right. to promote open source in the EU? So uh, we had a, a question from the audience asking whether we felt that it would be good for the uh, European Union to uh, allocate money to open source foundations to promote open source software. Uh, I actually think that would be the worst thing to do. Uh, open source foundations are uh, their framework, their shell. Um, they do have some staff working for them, but they should really have very small money needs. Uh, if you want to get software written, what you need to do is to create a market for that software. And so uh, the first thing that the European Union should do to promote open source software is adjust the procurement rules for government and at a local and a national level to allow open source software to be procured. Uh, and then uh, another really important thing it could do would be through the framework programs. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the framework programs. The European Union allocates money to projects that reach the goals of the, uh, the growth plans for the Union over a, a number of years. So at the moment there is a thing called Framework Program 7 where projects can bid to execute line items in the EU's growth plan. Now that's all public money that's being spent. 
the best way to deal with open source software here would be if the framework programs mandated that all the software that came out of that development had to be freely publicly available. So I think the best mandate that we could get from the European Union would be to say publicly funded work must be publicly available. That would immediately grow the status of open source software because there would now be more software for small businesses to build on, there would be more software being given into communities for development and that would result in a greater dependency and a greater innovation in Europe than just giving money to a foundation would. So what I guess then the, the best uh, the best use of a uh, of an open source foundation would be actually to push this forward politically. Right. Right. So, so uh, this this would be one of the things that I would welcome OSI members beginning to collect together to do within OSI would be to collectively say um, we need the legislation change for procurement. We need framework funded software to be to be uh, made public uh, on a compulsory basis. Uh, and that is what I would uh, want to have OSI doing. Um, the individual foundations that make up OSI, like Eclipse and Linux Foundation, OW2, their mission is to help their members make software. But OSI's mission is to collect together each of those organizations and act publicly in their interest. So yes, that is something I would have an organization like OSI, or indeed the Free Software Foundation, who are here as well. There's also the Free Software Foundation Europe. All three organizations talk to each other and often collaborate. And I think that would be a fine thing for us to do together. Well, thank you very much, Simon, for being with us and explaining all this. And uh, good luck with pushing this change uh, on the EU level. <laughs> thank you very much. I look forward to a day when all of the software that my tax euros go to uh, pay for is freely available under an open source license. I hope that too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.